If you've always wanted to build a guitar effect pedal but haven't been sure where to start, you're going to want to stick around and watch this video. Today we're going to be building this Fuzzlord FX Fuzz Face Kit from start to finish. A really awesome modern fuzz face that will sound good on any guitar or bass pedal board. I'm going to work along with you and populate the components into the circuit board. Talk a little bit about the wiring, the drilling of the enclosure, and of course we're going to hear what this pedal sounds like. So if you want to grab one of these kits, check the link in the description and you can pick one up from FuzzLordEffects.com or check out the other video I did a couple months ago where we did a DoD 250 style overdrive kit. If you want some more help, hang out with us on the FuzzLord Discord server. There's a bunch of people exchanging pedal info on there and sharing their builds. And I just saw a post recently of the first DoD 250 kit. Let's check out what this pedal sounds like, and then we're going to hop right into the build. But drop a comment below and let me know what got you interested in making a guitar pedal. switch over to the workbench and we're going to get this pedal built. One of the guys that solders and assembles pedals here, Ed, is giving us a hand today. So he's going to be helping us assemble this kit while I film him. Then at the end we switch over and I'm doing the final assembly. So let's hop over to the bench and we're going to get started. Get your tools together. If you're not sure what you need, check out the links in the description. All right, here we go. The first thing we're going to do is install the resistors into the PCB. The values are marked, bend the leads just a little bit and push them into the board. And the next thing is going to be the diode. There's a white band on the diode. Make sure it lines up with a white band on the PCB. After you get all those installed, you can flip the board over and start soldering all the leads one by one. Uh, be sure you use a solder fume extractor I'll leave a link to one in the description, as well as a soldering iron and a part snipper that we're going to see in just a second. Clip all of your leads on the back side of the circuit board after you make that first pass of the resistors and the diode. The next thing we're going to do is install the trim pot, as well as the ceramic disc capacitors. Install those, bend the leads over just a little bit. And then you can flip the board over and solder those and then clip the leads, of course. So when you're soldering, just uh, be sure to tin the tip of your iron, get a little solder on the tip first, heat up the component, and then once it's hot, the solder will flow. The next couple parts we're going to do are the electrolytic caps. That's the black one in the upper middle and the blue one in the upper left. Make sure that the negative side, which is the white band, is facing the left. And the positive lead actually has a plus mark on the circuit board that you orient it to. Uh, the last two parts we're going to do are the two transistors in the lower middle, those two little black half circles. The 3904, the 2N3904 goes on the left, the 2N5088 on the right. Be sure that the flat side is facing towards the right, which is printed on the silk screen of the PCB. And the last thing you're going to do is install the pots into the circuit board if you have PCB mount pots like I'm using in this build. If you've got wires, uh, like you're running wires to your pots, just cut a couple leads and wire up the pots to the back of the circuit board. Um, the other things we're going to do is install the ribbon cable and the secondary stomp switch PCB. But first, we're going to install some two inch wire leads to the top of the circuit board for the input, the output, the power, and the ground, all that kind of stuff. Uh, and the ribbon cable, of course. So, get that ribbon cable installed. The lead on the jacks that connect to the tip 
is the signal, the lead that connects to the, uh, the inner part is the ground. On the power jack, the big L-shaped bracket is the ground, the opposite one is the power. So once you get all that taken care of, we can solder the foot switch into the stomp switch PCB. So I set this build up for a 125B box. Uh, on the website, you can download the drill layout. I have it over next to me on the bench. You can either use a ruler. Uh, I like using a digital caliper. I'll leave a link to one of those too. Uh, it's just really easy. You can like set the measurement and then lock it at the market with your pencil. So take some mask and tape, mask off your box, and then you're gonna wanna measure out uh, a center line going in the horizontal and vertical direction. Make some lines, and then we're gonna do all the measurements that are available uh, on the website. We're gonna mark those out. Everything's measured from the center of the box, so the center of the top face and the center of the uh, the other top face where the jacks go. So here I'm just measuring out from the center for all the pots, the LED, as well as the stomp switch, uh, and then you're going to use an awl. Uh, I believe that's the right word. A punch. <laughs> anyway, go through and use a punch to mark all of the places you're going to drill. This is just going to make it so your drill bit doesn't slip when you're drilling out the enclosure. So get everything marked out and then we can switch over to the drill press. I like to start off using a very fine bit uh, and drilling out pilot holes first for everything and then switching over uh, and doing the same to the top before I use a step bit like this to make everything the proper size. So just have your components ready, your pots, your foot switch, your LED, bezel, and the jacks and everything uh, to make sure that you're drilling the correct size hole in the right spots and that everything fits. Right here I used a different bit for the LED bezel. Wear safety glasses, don't wear rings, um, don't wear long sleeves, and I believe a lot of people tell you not to wear gloves when you're using a rotary tool like this. So it looks like all finished up before we take the masking tape off. So now we're going to get everything installed in the enclosure starting with the LED. It has a long leg and a short leg also. The long leg's the positive, the short one's the negative. So the negative, the short side, is going to face towards the bottom of the enclosure towards like the foot switch and away from the input and output jacks. So push them in the bezel and then you can insert them into the enclosure. Short leg pointing down. It's a pressure fit if you drill the hole the right size. Uh, if you make it a little too big just use a drop of Elmer's glue. So just take the jacks, the wires for the jacks, fold them up a little bit, insert the PCB and the stomp switch into the enclosure. And the trick with the stomp switch PCB is you have to put it through the enclosure and then thread the two leads of the LED through the stomp switch circuit board. It's just like threading a needle, uh, be patient, you'll get it. 
So you can see there the leads are sticking up. But then you just gotta push the LED leads through that circuit board and then push the uh, stomp switch through, get it bolted down as well as the pots and the jacks. All right, same with the pots, put the washers and the nuts on, tighten them up. Hold on to the PCB from the back with your other hand. Put the power jack through the enclosure first. It'll make it easier to tighten everything up and then install the input output jacks. Tighten them up. All we really have left to do is to bias the circuit board. So connect your ground lead to somewhere and uh, to ground somewhere in the pedal. I like to test for nine volts up at the PCB first at the top, just to make sure I'm getting nine volts. And then put your multimeter positive lead to the test point for bias and use a little screwdriver to adjust the bias of that transistor until it's about 4.75 volts. Install your pot, or not your pot, sorry, your volume knobs onto the pots. And uh, once you get all that done and the pedal's biased up, we are all done. And that's what it's going to look like when this Fuzz Lord Fuzz Face kit is all finished up. Nice circuit board, nice and clean, compact, and it'll fit on any pedal board. I'm Jason from Fuzz Lord Effects. I really appreciate you watching this video. And again, drop that comment below and let me know what brought you here to the Fuzz Lord Effects YouTube channel and watching this video. If you haven't yet, please subscribe to the channel. I'd really appreciate it. I think we just broke 40,000 subscribers on the YouTube channel. And I can remember when there was 40 subscribers. I know some of you have been around watching the channel that long. So I'm curious to know what got you into wanting to build a guitar pedal. And also just uh, appreciate you watching. If you want to grab one of the kits, head on over to fuzzlordeffects.com. Check the link in the description. Uh, or if you want some more help with pedal building, check out the video I did for the other pedal kit. Because uh, we might have covered some things that... Uh, a little differently that might be helpful in that video. And if you want to meet more people in the DIY pedal community, check out the Fuzzlord Effects Discord server. I just started that recently and there's already a bunch of people in there sharing their pedal builds, asking questions to each other, and occasionally I pop in and try to be helpful uh, from time to time. So big thanks to everybody for hanging out over there. And while we're wrapping it up, just want to give a big thank you to all of the people's names that I'm running on screen right now. These are all the supporters on the Patreon page that help support what I do here on the Fuzz Lord Effects YouTube channel. So I really appreciate each and every one of you. And uh, if you're curious to know more, there's a link in the description. We do some pedal giveaways over there. Uh, I think recently we did an AM giveaway and a guitar giveaway. Those are like the big ones for the end of the year. And it's just another way for me to interact with people and for a bunch of awesome people to help support what i do here on the channel so we can keep putting out videos also i just want to give a big special shout out to jonas michael jacob corey and bayu slavic who are all longtime supporters over on the patreon page really appreciate you watching i'll talk to you in the comments and good luck building your first guitar pedal i know it's going to be a little tricky at first uh there's a lot of steps to it, but I am confident if you go through step by step and just handle things methodically, you can definitely do this. And when you're done, you're going to feel really rewarded with your hard work. Uh, there's nothing like building a guitar pedal on your own, drilling out the enclosure, making the circuit, and then getting to sit down and actually play it and see how good it sounds. So. I hope you get as much joy out of making this kit as I did. I'll see you in the next video.